Hey everybody, this is Fieldwork, your co-host Mitchell Hora joining you, and uh, super excited to have a conversation today with Rick Clark. We're out in Indiana at Rick's farm, um, and the talk here is really about how do we do sustainability at scale? We know that there's a lot of different options, there are a lot of, a lot of different tools that we can utilize to be more sustainable and to improve our impact on water quality and environment and whatnot. But how do we be able to, how do we actually scale this up to a manner where across the country, around the world, our effort can really make mm -hmm. an impact. And to do that, we have to scale this to a lot of acres. Right. So excited to be with Rick here today. Rick, thanks for having us, first I'm of all. Honored to be Explain to me, here. Uh, you know, how, where we're at. Tell mm -hmm. me about the farm. Right. Tell me about your path to sustainability. We are in uh, Williamsport, Indiana which is west central Indiana, right on the Illinois line, um, about 15 miles north of Interstate 74. Um, I'm a fifth generation farmer. My, fam my great, great ancestors homesteaded here in the 1870s. Um, I'm very honored to be able to continue that tradition onward. Um, we here are a cash crop rotation of uh, corn, soybeans, wheat, and in the acres that supply uh, a local dairy, we add alfalfa to that mix to give us four crops. I wish we could do more diversity than that, but we're just, we're bound by what markets we have. Sure. Um, and the last piece of the farm is we are in transition to organic. Um, we have been no-tilling soybeans for about 15 years. Okay. We've been no-tilling corn now for about 10, and we've been doing cover crops for about 10. Um, the very first success we had, uh, the very first attempt we had at cover crops was a successful attempt, and that's important. Uh, that kept my appetite for wanting to do more. Yeah. Uh, that was way back in 09, uh, I think 08 or 09, somewhere in that area. We planted just a very simple, basic tillage radish. Okay. Four pounds to the acre, that's all we did. Uh, they grew. That was this was done in September. Okay, so, flown uh, on in September. It was it was flown on a, a crop like uh, a species like tillage radish will winter kill. So we want to get it out as early as we can in the fall to let it do as much as we can. Um, I always say there are things in life that validate what you're doing if you just slow down and look for these validations. Sure. My first validation with cover crops the next year, that particular field was our best averaging yield corn on the farm. That's awesome. I was hooked. Oh. I instantly knew this is where we had to go. But it was just tillage radishes at four pounds, which is a pretty heavy rate. It's pretty, I didn't know what I was doing. It was yeah. too heavy. <laughs> there were radishes everywhere. <laughs> they were ever, how big were they? How big were they? Oh, they got to point? be the size of your arm. Oh, they were big Oh, radishes. they were big. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay, so just big radishes. Exploding out of the ground, disrupting the soil, and then the next surprise came when it got cold, they started to rot and smell. Oh yeah. And I'm like, what is that smell? <laughs> Again, I'm a rookie terrible. here, yeah, I'm yeah. a rookie here, so I walk out in the field and it's the radishes that are smelling. Yep. But now today, that smell is the smell of success. I like it. <laughs> that stank, <laughs> that stench that all the neighbors drive by. That's right. What is that? It's not manure. No. It's because it's literally a vegetable. That's right. It's like a rotting vegetable That's out right. there. So those, those radishes went into standing beans. That's correct. So went into beans before they dropped their leaves. That's correct. And then you planted corn the next year. Right. And it was the that. best yielding field we had. That's awesome. Yeah. So, but winter killed. Um, so one species, so you didn't jump right into diversity. No. Diversity one, can come later. Yeah. You got to get comfortable. How many acres did you do this That was on? just on uh, a 200 acre field. All right. So you got to get comfortable. You got to get relaxed and, and confident that what you're doing will, will work. How critical was the moisture of the soil? That was very critical. We had to have good seed the soil as much as we could. Now with the seed size of a radish, yep. that's why you can fly them on because you don't need a lot of soil no. content. You just need it to touch. Very small seeds. And a little bit of moisture and away they go. Because yep. remember, it was somewhere in that first 10 days of September, we're still in the 70s. Yeah. So it was a real quick germination and go. Yep. So nice and warm, but there was still a pretty good canopy at that point. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, but this doesn't work every develop. year. I got yeah. lucky. I got lucky. Yeah. That is not my preference to apply cover crop. It's it's a John Deere air seeder. Okay, so the air seeder is the deal now. But walk us through, okay, the transition here. So so tillage radishes in twenty nine mm. two thousand nine or so, somewhere in that somewhere area. In that yes, area. Good corn after that, but. And it was non-GMO corn at that point. No, it was still it was still GMO corn. We were on the GMO uh, trail. Yep. Um, so you were a normal farmer. I was just a normal farmer. I'd taken out the tillage though, and now we're introducing cover crops. Yep. Okay. So the next year, it went to 800 acres. Mm. The third year, it went to 2,000 acres. By the fourth year, the whole farm. I mean, I went quick yep. because I saw the benefits of what was happening. Now, Mother Nature has nudged me where she's been wanting me to go this whole journey. She made my first attempt a success. Yep. She is the one who got me into farming green because we had cereal rye growing with the intent we had, I don't remember how many acres, 1,500, 2,000 acres of cereal rye growing that was intended to be corn planted into it and then sent, um, at this point I'm still GMO, yeah. so we're gonna spray Roundup and terminate the cereal rye. It rained and rained and rained yep. and I'm now planting corn into five foot tall cereal rye. <laughs> okay. How can I do this? Well, we have no choice at this point because we have to plant corn for obligations that we have. Okay. So you had to get the corn planted because of the rotation, because of you know else. sales to the dairy, whatever. They needed their silage. These were acres that were committed to be silage. I've got to plant corn. But the point here too with not planting corn into big rye like that is because that rye is holding a lot of nitrogen. There's a lot of carbon out there. The carbon to nitrogen ratio at this point is at least 70 to 1. 70 to 1. Way too high. You're <laughs> on a train to failure. Yep. Okay. We're going, to, we're going to plant. But you plant it into it plant anyway. Plant it anyway. All right. That now, what happened. the thing that we've noticed at the first was the corn was deprived of nitrogen. Yep. Obvious, right? For sure. Okay. What are you going to do about that? We're going to now feed it more nitrogen up front, yep. waiting for the cereal rye to break down and release these nutrients that is, it is sequestered. Yep. We're going to feed it the nitrogen up front to get to this point. And then once we got that nitrogen fed, we were off to the races. Now, you will rarely hear me talk about yield, but again, this field, one of these particular fields was number two of the yielding for the whole, time. For the whole farm. Plants it in huge rye. Mother Nature said, you can do this. And, and she's helped me all the way. That gained my most confidence to now get wacky. Yep. Because that's what we do now, is wacky stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now you're now you're the weird farmer. In that's the right. Area. Yeah, and that's the way it is. But that's the way I want it to be. Yeah, that you're doing something totally different. Totally different. I I I do not want to be a commodity. Mm -hmm. I want to be something. Because walk us back through that. I think on where are these crops going to? So you have some diversity here, more than a lot of people are. I'm able very to have, fortunate. But I've you've got, got a, some markets. Explain those. Yeah, I've got a dairy that's only five miles away from where we're standing right here, that feeds non-GMO milk to a Dannon processing plant that then supplies non-GMO yogurt to the consumer. In 14, 2014, Dannon came to me in, I, I, I remember this, my dad's birthday is, is April the 12th, and they came to me on April the 10th, two days before dad's birthday. Said, Rick, we need you to switch 1,500 acres of GMO corn to non-GMO corn. Yeah. Can you do that? I'm ready to go to the field and plant. You got the seed sitting yeah, right there. It's right there, ready to crack the, the, the pro box open. Yep. Make a couple phone calls. Again, I'm, I'm, this is kind of, I mean, I'm only 55 years old. But people forget how just recent ago we didn't have traits. <laughs> sure. Okay? Sure. So now I'm all kind of... You know, how, do I, how am I going to do this? Yeah, you're freaking out. Yeah, I'm freaking out, but, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. So I get a couple, make a couple phone calls. Yep, we round up 800 units of seed. Yeah. Actually, easier than I thought at the time. We plant the seed. We use insecticide. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. This is the last year we ever used a trait or an insecticide on this farm. Wow. Okay. Because this is 2014. This is 14. Okay. So from 15 on, yeah. we've used no seed treatments, no insecticides, no fungicides, mm -hmm. none of those attributes. Because this farm is heading toward balance. Balance between predator to prey yep. and balance between bacteria and fungi. Yep. When you take away the, the insecticides and the seed treatments, the, the neonicotinoids, all these things that are, are killing our beneficial species, yep. you take all those away, we're heading toward balance, and now I can plant non-GMO corn or organic corn because it has the balance and you don't have all the issues out there that we're scared about. That's right. The reason why we have a corn rootworm problem is because the species that preys on corn rootworm We've is not them. there. Sure. On the farms over there. On yep. our farm, we're getting to balance. And so you started in 2019 with those cover crops. By 2014, everything's in cover crop. Yes. yes. Yeah. 2009. Yeah, 2009. So 2009. It's, it's full you were blown. Cover crop everywhere. It's full now, blown. By that time, cover crop everywhere. And it's and we're and we're deep into farming green now. Farming green. And this is why I think qu people question me on how I've gotten to where we are so quickly. I think it's because we have let these cover crops go further into the growing season. I will only plant corn and soybeans into a living, growing, green cover crop. Right. Nothing's killed beforehand. It's all terminated afterwards. Yep. I now no longer will plant corn before Mother's Day because I am coming with a legume package this fall mm -hmm. to get pr prepared for my corn crop next spring. The last thing I want to do is spray it and burn it down April the 1st. I want to let that legume fix all the nitrogen I can yeah. because here's, here's where I'm at on this. I have a, in my opinion, I have a realistic yield goal on this organic mm -hmm. corn of 150. My uh, factor on nitrogen is, is somewhere between 0.7 and 0.8. Okay. So let's say it's 0.8. That's about, I need about 120 units of N. Yep. I can show you data with the cocktails that I plant, I can fix 75 to 100 pounds of nitrogen through these legume packages. Okay. The system that I've got working with the microbes and everything with the cover crops, we are gonna mineralize at least another 50 pounds. I have the nitrogen now I need to raise a 150 bushel corn crop. Right, so, so you're building up your cover crop utilization right. and now after a couple of short years, you are all in. Right. What does that look like? Well, today, what that looks like is about, about 7,000 acres. Okay. And, and I know that seems like a lot, but once you, you get your system in, I mean, we are develop, we've developed and we're constantly trying to improve a systematic approach to regenerative farming. That's what we do here. And in my opinion, 1,000 acres, 5,000 acres, 10,000 acres. Once you get the system in place. You can scale it. it you can scale it. Well, and and you're, how many times are you actually going across the field? Well, we've got a, we've got a the, to me, the most important pass is the cover crop pass, sure. the, the air seeder. That's number one. Number two is the planter in the spring. Air, so air seeder in the fall, following the combine. Yep, it's in the same field. Then in the spring. Planter. And the problem with that is, is me trying to stay awake because I'm in this field by myself with no, there's no radio chatter going on. You know, you know, the, the guy in the field cultivator is not calling, hey, you know, what am I going to do here? There's none of that going on. I've got a seed tender parked at the end of the field. There's no starter fertilizer being used. There's no nitrogen being <laughs> nothing applied. Nothing to slow you down. There's nothing to slow me down. you got to listen to this great podcast I got, called Fieldwork. That's right. That's exactly right. You would stay awake for hours. That's exactly right. But then, that's number two. Yep. Second pass, planter. Combine. What about the roller crimper? And then the roller crimper. Yes, so I've got that. four passes. Four passes total. Total. And none of, them, uh, none of them turn any soil. Yep. So air seeder in the fall, planter in the spring, roller, roller crimper, crimper, which we'll get into. Right. And harvest. Right. 
and that's it. Right. All right, so a quick little field trip now out to see the pride and joy yes. of the farm. This is my baby. This is the uh, roller crimper that uh, comes from INJ Manufacturing in Pennsylvania. It's the same concept that the Rodale Institute came up with. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I'm trying to build complex uh, cocktails, but also cocktails that can be terminated with the roller crimper. Okay. And this is this is this is it. This yeah. is why we do it. And this is pulled through the field to just lay everything down in a mat. Right. And it kind of breaks it off a little bit. Right. Crimps it. Right. Hence the name. Right. Crimp it off. Leave your armor. No herbicides no, needed in. No herbicides, no nothing needed. How big, this is a big one. This is matching our planters. This is 60 feet wide. Uh, it just works best to make everything work in the same width. Um, and, and this is the chevron pattern that makes this so viable is because then as it's rolling that cereal right down, it's hitting it on an angle and then a different angle and then another angle as it rolls across it. So not only have we broke it at the stem probably, but we've now hit it up through the stem two or three times. I see. It's gone. It, it's just dead. Fuel consumption has to be like, 50%. the fuel guys have to hate you. They hate us. They're never here. They never come. They, they never, never get to come visit. 50%. 50% of the fuel that you were using. Right. From a, typically. From, yes. From 2010 or 11 to today, we've decreased fuel by 50%. And that equates to how much money? That alone is about $35,000 a year. Yeah. Now, if you add up, I've got a, a slide that I have in some of my presentations. Um, I've got fuel, I've got horsepower. Horsepower, we've gone from 3,400 horsepower to 1,200. Same acres. Yeah. Um, and that's why our fuel consumption is down, that's obvious. Sure. Uh, uh, synthetic in, uh, MAP, uh, DAP, MAP or DAP, potash, and ag lime. Yep. All those added so up. That's a synthetic fertilizer. Synthetic all those MPK are and lime. Those are all zero. They're all zeros. No ag lime. Our, I just got some Haney tests back um, uh, this week. Okay. Our pH on the farm is 6.8 to 7. And I haven't applied any ag lime for five years. Back to the balance. I've taken away all the thing, the acid, the, acid. the salt. All that's gone. Yeah. So we are becoming synergistic with Mother Nature. Yeah.